Are you ready? <laughs> yes. I so. Oh boy, we're already having fun. <laughs> it's a John Paquin podcast. I'm John Paquin coming to you from the Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance podcast studio, beautiful downtown Portland, Connecticut. Come over the bridge, start looking left. If you're watching us by any chance on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and like. Listen at the end. Our boss, Dave, can tell you how to have your very own podcast right here in the studio, just like we're doing now. We're here today with, I'm going to make it official, my best friend. I said it. Hey, Tom, hey. His name is Tom Izzo. He's doing all, everything but the drum here. That's him. Tom Izzo created our theme. That is the be That is a fine intro because John was just asking me how to introduce me. And I said, yeah. uh, but yes. Just I, start there. Make it official. Yep. You, as you know, I say that about everyone. Well, okay. Right. So then the heck with it. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, exactly. It's lost some of its punch. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> um, so Tom is a, I get, there's no primary, but primarily I know him as a guitar player, guitar player, singer, but he's more than that. Um, Tom is a guitar player, singer, uh, composer. We're going to get into that, whatever, what, what that means, what that means to us, what that means to you, what that means. But a, a composer, not just, uh, he doesn't just, I mean, he did compose that, but, but also more, right? Sure. Sure. Yeah. All right. Um, so why don't we, uh, we'll take it from, I guess, the beginning. We're going to pretend like, I'm going to pretend like I don't know everything already. Okay. Because we, we talk all the time, so. Just pretend that we don't know. So your name again? <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> what am I doing here? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I, th this may or may not be interesting to some people. I think it's kind of interesting. So Tom Izzo plays left-handed, a, a right-handed guitar flipped upside down, um, in an open tuning. How about that? That's rare. I, you know, interesting. I don't know if it's an open tuning or not. I guess it's oh. it's straight, what I would call straight fourths. I, it's not like tuned to a chord, though. I guess, oh, okay, so I, okay. which I think right. would be yeah, an open be, tuning. Gotcha. Whatever. I mean, it doesn't matter. But um, either way, wrong. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, either way, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I could be wrong. We'll no, no, no. I'm saying the tuning is wrong. I'm oh, not the saying tuning. I'm not saying you're wrong. Okay, okay, Listen, yeah, yeah. there will be plenty of opportunities yeah, yeah. for you to be wrong. I'll be wrong <laughs> later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be wrong later. Um, so, but that is for the for anyone who does not play guitar. That's unusual. It's unusual. It's wrong. Yeah. Wrong. The the um. How the, did that happen? The string. <laughs> Literally, uh, ignorance and naivety. Right. Uh, I just didn't know any better. I started playing when I was probably five or six mm -hmm. and um, my parents bought me, you know, some cheap bow acoustic guitar, whatever. Sure. Didn't, you know, you were a left-handed person by then. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Me too. Like horrifically left-handed, no escaping it, you know, mm -hmm. um, we've talked about it I'm sure but yeah. like I was last to be able to do anything because yeah, yeah, yeah the left handed thing at yeah. any rate but then I, so I just in my and my sister's boyfriend at the time played guitar and he showed me a tune and I just picked it up and just played it backwards and then huh. there you know and that's and that's how it started and I just didn't even know I was doing anything wrong until it was too late yeah I yeah think, yeah I, you know when did you realize it was too it was wrong well you know what it's a funny thing because I think probably almost immediately, I'm sure my sister's boyfriend, then husband, then ex husband, sure. um, uh, uh, was probably saying, Yeah, you, you know, you're playing wrong or whatever, but it, you know, whatever. But then throughout year after year, as I'm sure people have said with you, uh, you're playing wrong. You can't play like that. Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. Play I like play that. wrong too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, um, but I was too young to care what anybody said at that point. But yeah. I do think it had an effect. Um, uh, probably, I think it plays in the back of your mind where you st that start you're wrong. To, yeah, in a weird way. Yeah. You know. Well, you are wrong. <laughs> and I listen. I'm wrong about, too about most things. Yeah, me too. We're married. We're wrong. Yeah. I'm wrong. Uh, I'm just wrong. Yeah. That's all yeah. there is to it. Um. Did you, you probably were playing better than people that were playing right. 
by then. I had uh, so your ear guided you. You were able to figure out. Yeah, so. I mean, it was all yeah. all ear for a long, 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 long time. You know what though? I think like I I do remember the first few those first few tunes. I could play them like within a you know within a week or whatever. I just I could just play yeah. like almost immediately. But I think I spent years sort of in the wilderness just literally picking things out and like just developing like playing power yeah. chords trying to figure out what a chord not even knowing yeah. what a chord was but yeah. like years and years and years just doing that which is fine actually because yeah, yeah. i think it was like a really primitive ear training probably yeah. i don't know if you missed it dave he plays lefty upside down guitar Some of them, yes. with the the high string tune yeah yeah, yeah. crazy how did that happen because that's a whole different thing. <laughs> the tune. Like, yeah, the, like that doesn't even. Because I didn't know. Because my my brother in law showed me how to tune a guitar like once, and then and you just ding, 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 that's ding, how ding, I remember. Ding, 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 I forgot. Ding, ding. Yeah. I forgot about the fourth. Fret. That you're supposed to go down. Yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, well. It's totally ridiculous. But I play in standard now. But right. I play both. But. You know, like if I do an acoustic gig, I'll play standard tunes. It's just easier to play an E major because you can do an open oh. E as opposed to having to play an open F, which is would be my tuning. Like, wow. Know. When did you? Uh, <laughs> that's weird. It's, Watch, we're gonna get no further. I know. So I thanks know. for <laughs> thanks for coming. <laughs> like, so I don't know. Not being a guitar player. So when you decided, well, at least let me tune it the right way. How hard was it for you to reconfigure everything that you had learned up to that point? I didn't tune to standard tuning until I was probably 30. Wow. Because that's, that's when, let that's me funny. think, was I 30? Yeah. Because that's when Frank and I started the, the acoustic duo again. And I was doing gigs and I'm like, you know what? Let me, this song would be easier to do it just in in, in E. Wow. And like in the, and I can play an E major chord, but it's just not that open E. Yeah. So I said, let me just tune normal. So then I just started playing that way for a lot, for all of those gigs. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. It's so dumb. I'm just laughing because it's so, it's so dumb. Well, <laughs> so like n now that you, knowing all that you know now, would you, would you have chosen to do that? To the phone again. Um, would you like? Are there advantages to it that you understand now? Um, do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. Um, there are advantages in some respects. Yeah. But there are advantages to tuning the way I tune to that's, straight force. Right. That's actually. what I'm thinking. Yeah, because um, everything. On, this is so boring. No, no, no. We'll get past but it. I'll make it quick. Yeah, but yeah. everything aligns very, very. Um, the patterns aren't disrupted by the weird by tuning to the fourth fret on the on the guitar. So everything, okay. if I do a pattern, I could just go up, and everything is just kind of lines up. You know, right. you don't have to make any adjustment in my tuning. Yeah, right? yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, certain things are easier to reach because huh. they're tuned. Those two strings are tuned a half step higher. Wow. So certain chords and things. So not nature. necessarily. Oh, no, hold like, on. Actually, they're harder. Sorry. See, uh, backwards. Yeah. Wrong. So not necessarily. If you had to redesign the way guitar was, do you think they would be open? I think the guitar was probably designed the way it was for a reason. I think this, there's so much standard repertoire, especially if you're talking about classical music right. that, that, you know, relies on that standard tuning that it, it would be, I mean, I, gotcha. I think there's a reason why yeah. it started, yeah. why they, they chose to do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. exactly. Those people what it are was, all but... dead and buried now though. <laughs> Who cares? It doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I mean, know I had a guy like I couldn't, it's no problem. I mean, people are, fine that people are people but i had i played a gig this weekend i play wrong if anyone doesn't know i'm left-handed but i play on a right-handed drum kit but i'm right-footed left-handed so i don't cross over when i play the hi-hat i play like this right and i had some dude come up to me and he's like oh man that's so cool that you do that i could never do that and i'm like well i couldn't right i, I can't play righty and he didn't understand he goes no i know but the, the, the fact that you can do that is amazing. And I'm like, but it's not amazing though. Yeah. Because I'm left-handed. Yeah. I didn't learn to do that. I did, I, you know, 
But there are advantages to playing open because I never get hung up. Everything is like oh, open. Oh, yeah, sure. So if you could play open, I think people would. But you'd have to be left-handed. And most I, people I aren't. mean, this is a like this is so this stupid. is a, a two o'clock in the morning conversation. But yeah, I want to ask. Yeah, we'll you, do a seven fifty w- yeah, p.m. I, I want to ask you if you think that you can get different sounds on the hi hat that you. I mean, you're Maybe. already saying that, but like Maybe. generally, you know, yeah, I could be. Is it so distinctive? Do you think that could be? You know, yeah. There's definitely patterns I can play. Yeah, I have routines that I do that. A right-handed person can't do, but <clears throat> by the way, this is the most boring episode. And, of all. Right all now, right. sadly, okay. that's all right. And, uh, this is the way it goes. They the, are typical. That's all right. Exchanges. I, it, that's fine. Yeah, this is this is how it goes. Um, well, at least take us through, you know, why music, why guitar, other than the fact that there was one there. Okay, but and and I will again try because you know sure. who cares. Um, I, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're mid sentence when we reach an hour. <laughs> so you can talk all you want, <laughs> and then I most importantly, I by <laughs> thanks for coming. I'll see you later. You should actually have that go backwards at the end. <laughs> yeah. I think. Um, simple, literally, and I don't know why, but earliest memories are about uh, thinking about music from I can remember like having a toy guitar and dragging my grandfather to show him the toy guitar I probably was probably three or something yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean like yeah, it was yeah. always yeah. I don't know why I have no idea but that's the way it is it doesn't really mean anything you know what I mean it's not yeah. like uh, yeah, some uh, some guys that are truck drivers like the trucks when they were kids right 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 yeah. it just is what it is so it was just always a thing and then when I could actually get my hands on a real guitar because like I grew up you know, my sisters every weekend would, my parents would be out, you know, doing their thing and my sisters would be forced to watch me, but they'd have their friends over and they'd be playing Aerosmith and Zeppelin and all that cool stuff. And I would just be playing air guitar in the corner all night while they were, you know, cool. it, I mean, so like, I just loved guitar and Queen and all that stuff, you know, so. And not, not bass, not drums. No, not piano, guitar, man. Guitar. It was like guitar was that cool sound, you know, yeah. how do you do that thing, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, that's kind of cool. It's a guitar era. Sure was. Of music, for sure. So why not? Why not? Um, and then, so did you, were you in bands? Because you didn't come through like the typical, like I did, like the typical bar band kind of thing. How did you, how did you end up? Yeah, I was thinking about that, actually. Well, I did like high school bands, sure. not like in not the official high school bands, but there were bands that I played in, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah in high school. Um, and but but my first professional gig was a session gig. Oh, so I didn't do. You're right. That's where we're yeah, yeah, yeah. exact opposites. Actually, I started off doing session stuff. Um, I met people that uh, who are still dear, dear friends of mine, but like I was working at a music shop in New Haven and this woman came in and she's like, can you, I want you to play on my demos. She was, her name is Callie Cardamon. Okay. She's, they, so her and her husband, they, they really changed a lot of things in my life actually. Got, got me thinking about music in different ways. Um, but um, what was I saying? Oh, so at any rate, she I think at the time she was signed with Sony, I think, and they were doing oh, like a spec deal, like demo sure. stuff. And so they wanted me to play guitar on these demos. So that's that's what happened. Um, and then, you know, yeah, so that was my first paying gig, actually. Wow. How when how old were you? Uh, 18, I think. Oh, it's kind of cool. So you skipped all the uh, when did you start playing in bars? Um, not, not till later. Probably. No, I, w- I was. I, I, the Frank and I started, we were in bands and started probably playing bar gigs when I was 21, 22. Oh, that's so bad. But, but at the time, which <clears throat> you didn't experience this, you, cause you were in a, an established thing. There was just nowhere to play yeah. around here. Like, yeah. like a typical, you yeah. know, like there's a lot of places to play now, but back then Seems man, like it. it seemed like there was nothing going on. We probably didn't know what we were doing either about booking. You know, we huh. definitely didn't know what we were doing about you know, hmm. yeah. So that's that's, uh, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. All right. I'll see you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So tell us about um, composing, because that's how I kind of know you in a way, too, as. Like you're you're the guy that knows more than most people about mm-hmm. th- things like that. Um, well, I think right around the time I was 18, 19, I started... I, I started listening just kind of peripherally to classical music. It just, I don't know why, again, it just, there was just a sound that sure. I heard. I think it was WC, and I was just like, wow, that is really beautiful. And, I, and it's really like kind of dreamlike and otherworldly. Yeah. And I was like, how, what's that all about? Hmm. At any rate, it was kind of just in the back of my mind. And as I got older, I just kind of became uh, more focused on the idea of of trying to kind of get in there and figure out what was going on also i had a mental breakdown because i was writing a bunch of songs and i realized that i couldn't be elvis costello or john lennon and so i was like let me try composing classical music yeah i bet i bet that i bet that's easier because there's no words uh (laughs) and and beside the fact who composes anymore which is wrong so you thought it's an open field yeah just just totally totally ridiculous wow <laughs> well uh, it's interesting so you were like i'll go here because no one else is here yeah was, and who was there everybody everybody was already there <laughs> bummer uh, wow all right it's so funny I, well, I'm, I'm sorry about that no it's fine it's you know kind of the the way it goes so at any rate so then i i spent oh, i remember a long time trying to find somebody because I was just interested in trying to do private lessons with somebody. Yeah, yeah. I found one person; it wasn't that great. And then um, I found this guy Istvan Beratz, is a, um, a Hungarian American composer. He works down in New Haven. At, well, he was working at the Neighborhood Music School. I don't know if he is anymore. And I started studying with him. He was another guy that changed everything. Um, and and he. In turn, after I studied with him for a year or two, it was like, you have to go study with Robert Carl, who was the head of the comp department at the Hart School. And, um, and so I, he made a, you know, an introduction for me, and I got in. I was studying privately with him, and then he's like, you should come and, and, and go to school here. Oh. And so he got me in, and you know, it, was life, it was truly life-changing. I mean... In, in good ways and bad ways, but um, mostly the bad ways are mostly the financial sure. aspect of never being able to recoup because who's so going to make money composing? Right, so your curiosity got the better of you. Yeah, I couldn't help it. Yeah. Sorry. So that was a long, sorry, I just went off on a little No, well, I mean. Just trying to sum up real quick. Well, you don't need to sum it up real quick. I mean, you can tell us the, the long story. It's fine. Well, I figured that you were, you're going to try to play that theme song 15 times in a row, maybe <laughs> at the end. Um, so yeah, so that's what happened. And then, and then I went there for I think it was like five years and got uh, you know w- went through the the system there. Did you? Did, was your sat was your curiosity satisfied sufficiently? Yeah, I mean, I went in heavy you know, and, and, and hard and like really explored all there, I think all there was to explore, not, not all there was to explore, but you know what I mean? Like I did, I, 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 satisfied. Took, I took as much as I could take from, from the experience. I definitely, you know, well, that's cool. What, um, how do you, uh, I'm trying to think, how do I, how do I put this? So what's a typical curriculum like like what do you do analyze everything um so when you're doing the undergrad thing you know first of all you have to do ear training which sound you know it's more than simply like what note is this or whatever yeah, yeah. i mean it's like all sorts of rhythmic exercises independence being able to play and sing different things at the same time and you know it's pretty cool actually it's a pain in the ass but oh a pain in the butt but zip but it, but it but it was but it was pretty darn cool um but you do that you uh, analysis um you do like the entry level composition courses you just kind of do a survey of i mean you know we would learn about indian ragas and oh, things boy. like that and then on top of you know 
alias what you would call aleatoric music which is like you know uh, sort of music that is I wouldn't say improv based but left to, elements are left to chance all sorts of every sort of technique of composing that you could think of they just kind of throw it at you and wow. and you kind of find your way I was into avant-garde what you would call avant-garde music at the time so I, I was you know going for all the crazy so i spent a lot of time i wrote a lot of scores where they were called graphic scores or like images oh wow and you'd have to just kind of play through the images and things like that that huh. wasn't everything that i did but yeah wow <clears throat> so if you had pursued it more you would be it would you be strictly an avant-garde composer did you ever think about it N no well i mean i did and still do pursue it so like i okay. you know i but but it's you know i had my daughter was born and that kind of muted the, uh, the how much i could follow sure. you know you know how much i could pursue things but um you know i still get commissions here and there and you know uh not as much as, as before but um but yeah yeah uh it's funny what i came the conclusion i came to was that i love all that stuff but i also do love just like a melody you yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. So, like, I think my music is kind of an odd mix between th those things. Mm -hmm. Maybe not so much odd to other people who are in the know or whatever, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So you have um, do do composers? Uh, there's probably not an answer to this. I'm just trying to imagine. Do you have to choose a lane? See, here's the thing. You know that is interesting. That I when I when I was naive and got into it, I thought. You know, I can just do whatever I want yeah, because it's, I'll be me. It, it's an open field, right, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Then you get in there and you realize it's as much of a business marketing, what lane are you in thing as any other type of music. Oh boy! So you know, uh, you, not to go off on a tangent, well, but like in the in the seventies. There were there was the younger crop of composers that were coming up that wanted to write tonal music, meaning music with melodies and like nice harmonies and stuff okay. like that. But they were being taught by these guys who were called serial composers, where you, it, the music was atonal. You, there was no tune; it was really dissonant music. Okay, and they would not allow these guys to write in this tone. Oh, wow. oh yeah, it was like you know if you had an octave in it, you know it was like get out oh wow so at any rate my point is like even back then oh lanes it was more academic but like but now sure it's like anything else yeah 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 so but so you'd have to brand yourself almost yeah but i'm at the, i'm in a, at a in a place and at a stage where i don't care because i don't it's no stakes for me it's not like i'm trying to have a right uh, you know trying to get a commission from the london symphony or something it's mm -hmm. just not going to happen so do, I guess we all think it must just be, be like rock and roll. Like you must have thought that you would someday. And then at some point you oh, just sure. kind of realize like anything you're like, sure. well, you know, I'm not going to either catch the break or. Yep. You know. Because, well, listen, I mean, there's a million reasons because there's, you know, you know how it is literally around the block. There's some guy who's just incredible. And of course he's going to get all the gigs. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there's that, but there's also just, the mar it's like all the you know the the guys in Yale and the guys yeah, yeah. at Indiana they get all the the gigs off the top because they yeah, just yeah. assumed that they're the cream of the crop, so stuff like that. I mean, it's fine. It yeah. is what it is. Whatever. But. Well, you. It sounds like you went into it more. Well, I guess you would have. Well, anyway, if if any of us are moronic enough to pursue music at any <laughs> level, you you don't get into it because you go, oh hey, this is a get rich quick no, scheme this would be easy you do it because you're screwed because your curiosity screws you over yes. and you end up having to know yep. and then you find out yep um it's true it's like um i'm trying to think of an analogy of where you where you open the box and uh, well pandora's box yeah. i guess but um yeah it's like you have to know though you know you got to know it's like don't open that closet door yeah you know yeah, what i mean yeah. it's like you don't know what monster looks there yeah and then there you are. There's 20 years of my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know this is a stupid question, probably impossible to answer because nothing, but I don't want to say, was it worth it? But are you satisfied on some level that you, 
explored it? You wanted to explore it and then you did? It is such a hard question for yeah, me yeah. to answer. Yeah. On so many levels, it was so worth it because it literally did, it completely changed my life. I have such a deeper understanding of how music works. And, and for me, what I do, even when I'm writing regular songs, I just, you know, I have a deeper understanding of the mechanism. And to me, that was important. I just, I'm that, just like yeah, you sure. are, you know what I mean? We're like seekers, you know what I mean? We just yeah, want to yeah. learn, learn, learn. And it was just, you couldn't go wrong, you know? But um, honestly, I mean, the, the, the cost is, you know, it's, it's yeah, a yeah, lot. Yeah. And it's, it's, col it's just the same old college thing, you know, uh, that everybody's dealing with. Right, it's, right. It's, not it's everybody really, gets to use their thing. Right. And it's really expensive. And then you're not, you know, you're not, it's not paying for itself in any yeah, way, really. Yeah. No, no. But, um, and whatever. I mean, so yes, I'm a little torn in that respect, but it did absolutely change everything for me. Uh, you know. And that's why when we hang out, you can't enjoy any any music that I play. No, that's all... not the reason. No. It's that I can't enjoy you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's being in your presence it's that being makes in it your all. presence. Yeah. The music is fine. Uh, wow. No, you know. No, what? but that's not true though of you. What do you mean? Well, you're, you're not. It, well, because you're. I mean, you're a rock and roll guitar player too. So you're not yeah, like. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah, at all. No, no, but no. listen, I mean, I, I was going to say, I'll be sincere for yeah, two yeah. seconds. Yeah. All of the important people in my life. I, I realized they were like catalysts for learning something. And you are absolutely one of those people. I'm always learning from you. Oh, really? Sure. Because you're a master at your craft. You are, you know, oh, I mean, I appreciate that, you know, um, you, and so there's always something. So even just the listening excursions yeah, are yeah. absolutely, uh, you know, learning experiences for me. Well, so no, cool. I mean, but no, it's not like a snooty thing. I mean, I just, you know, yeah. it's just, uh, it's like a, a buffet. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I, I well, like, that's cool. All that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I love, I mean, I'm writing. So you didn't like learn, songs. you didn't like learn your way out of enjoyment. No, that's such, you know, BS. Yeah, all yeah, that yeah. stuff, you yeah. know. Do you know people like that? Paul McCartney. Yeah. Sadly, who I, you know, is like one of my idols, but yeah. like his whole thing is he refuses to read music because he thinks it's going to somehow dampen his oh, creativity. Yeah, and it's like, no, it's not. We've had that conversation yeah. before. It's like, no, it's not. Plenty of times. I know. You know, it's not. It's just another. It's like, do, do you not enjoy uh, sentences because you learned how to read them in a book or oh, something? You know what I mean? It's Don't like, even. Yeah. We do it. Yeah, See, this whatever. is the conversations we have all the time. Yes. Because I'm like, as a, whatever, not, for, for anyone who doesn't, maybe, I'll try to make it quick, that maybe doesn't understand this part of the conversation. So, um, but like myself, just because, because I'm, I'm here, so I'm going to talk about me. Um, I learned to play the instrument probably like you did before I knew any music theory at all. I just did it instinctively. I could imitate what I heard and off I went. And somewhere along the line, probably just in public school, I started to learn theory and realized I just, it wasn't that hard, especially drums. It's just rhythm. You don't have to learn harmony or melody. And I found that knowing that actually helped me. It did, it, it enhanced the, whatever gifts I already had. And what we're talking about is some people think that I think mistakenly, if they learn the theory or the nuts and bolts, it's going to take the mystery out of it. I don't, I don't think that's true. And as a teacher, I try to teach my kids how to read because it helped me develop my creativity. It didn't, it, you know what I mean? A hundred percent. I but, mean, you could still, you know, know how to read and know what, I don't know, yeah. name Bach or something, yep. whatever composer, you know, or, or the Beatles. Yeah, you could actually let's use the Beatles because that's more yeah. universal. You could know every chord that they're using and how it's and understand how it works, but you don't know where the hell it came from. Like right. I am the walrus. It's like right. you know this is this guy's ear yeah. doing some crazy things. Yeah. You know, um, 
So it's like, yeah, you could, but it's, but there's still a mystery. My point is there's still the mystery and the majesty of the mystery. Yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, not to. The pageantry oh. of rock. Yeah. The, the majesty of rock, the pageantry of roll. Is that how it goes? I don't know. I don't Spinal know. tap. Oh. <laughs> um, oh, God. Yeah. Well, I'll take it from you because, I mean, I would think you're, you're if not the, probably easily one of the mo most knowledgeable people of music and you're not a stiff you don't play like a stiff you lord don't... why would you well i appreciate your well, faith in my knowledge but uh yeah does I this mean... sound like a stiff to you <laughs> <laughs> you know no but yeah it's uh interesting i suppose um that conversation but i don't know how interesting it is so i don't know i don't know how yeah. far we should go down well, that. everybody's yeah everybody's tuned out 10 minutes ago no that's all right um so what are some of your maybe this would be interesting to talk about or maybe explain why who are some of your uh composer heroes and why like who did you learn along the way that you strongly identified with one off the top is a guy named Stravinsky. Okay. Uh, Igor Stravinsky. Um, I mean, I, it's really hard to, to kind of sure. summarize, but you know, I mean, he has this really interesting rhythmic sensibility, it, revolutionary actually, and harmonic sensibility too. That was revolutionary, but you know, that's not necessarily why, uh, you know, that's not it because it's revolutionary, but it's just, it's just when I first heard, a particular piece by him I was like this I don't even I don't like this I don't it sounds like it's from another planet to yeah, me. yeah but something made me keep listening and then one day it just clicked I was like oh all right this is yeah. something else mm -hmm. um as was I that before or after you started going to school it was before okay um I actually because I remember you know where I was living uh on Catherine Drive where we where we used to come yep. and see me um yeah. So, and I, I had this, I was, that's right. So back the, so what my thing was, I would just buy every classical CD that I'd get my hands on. I just listen, listen, wow. listen, listen, just like you do with sure. everything else, you know? Um, but yeah, so I put this on, I was like, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. You know, but there's tons, I mean, there's tons, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you with, I was with, saying it's a different conversation than I usually have with sure. rock and roll bands. Oh, I'm just curious. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, like some of the big ones. Uh, I mean, sometimes it's just a piece, you know what I mean? There's a, an American composer named Roy Harris and uh, his, his piece that everybody listens to him for is, is the third symphony. Okay. And it's just to me, it, well, it, it's completely majestic, completely. You listen to it and you go, Oh, this is America. Oh. And then on the other hand, he's using like medieval, compositional type like a thing called organum where you've got like basically power chords just kind of running up it, it just this weird ancient sounding stuff at the same huh. time sort of it's it you know he's kind of polished it um but um but it's just an odd piece to me i don't know hmm. but it's got all sorts of things uh, goodness inside of it that yeah, makes yeah. you want to keep listening you know it's cool you look bored already say no so. no I'm, I'm i'm trying to no i'm, fo I'm following you I mean, I am bored, but I'm actually trying to follow you at the same time. But, uh, um, no. Uh, so, I mean, you know, but yeah, it's just like with uh, bands. You know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. it's just a couple of songs. Sometimes it's an album. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes yeah. it's everything. So it's no different from a no, from any other. Yeah, it's the same thing. And yeah, for, for to... people like us who are, you know, musicians or whatever, sometimes it's very pragmatic. It's It's about... I want to take this from this person and incorporate it into, into my thing, my yeah. bag of tricks. Yeah. And so it might be just one particular thing that, that yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? That speaks to Right, you. so you're not all in with somebody. No, just, but, like, but it was influential or whatever, yeah. you know? And sometimes yeah. you don't like it and it's influ influential. Yeah, sure. And it's still like you could see the value in it and you're like, ah, all right. Yeah. So uh, that's probably very no, that's, obtuse. No, that, no that, that's fine. Um. Talk about, um, excuse me, talk about rock and roll and talk about that other side. Who are your inspirations? Yeah. Um, 
I'm, I'm trying to think of something sarcastic to say, but I'll just be, <laughs> <laughs> but I won't. Um, well, Beatles, sure. huge, right? Uh, you know, growing up, it was Queen, Aerosmith, Zeppelin. I mean, that's like DNA imprint stuff. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. So that's just in there. Um, but uh, it's, I'm trying to think of, you know, songwriting wise, you know, Beatles, Elvis Costello. Um, what was the first Elvis thing that you heard? That's a good question. Yeah. You know what? I, I used, I'm a big fan. That's one right. Of those things. I used to. I, hate him and then <laughs> when i got older i was like oh, all right there's something going on there yeah, yeah, after yeah. i started getting back into the beatles big time yeah and started really getting into songwriting i was like oh this can't be denied so i think i'm trying to think of what the first thing that i bought it might have been it might have been armed forces yeah, yeah. but then brutal youth came out in like 93 or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, that just blew my doors in. i was sure. like this is just sure so so cool. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I bought a bunch of stuff. Not all, yep. but I, a bunch of stuff. There's there's a guy. I don't own everything, but you know, I I certainly got the imprint. You know? Yep. Um. So you were like this. This is a thing. Oh yeah. I start getting into it. But I'm trying to think. I mean, geez, there's just a ton of. Yeah, I know. You know, I mean, you know, tons uh, of them. B big star. I like. Oh, okay. Her, which cool. you, I know you're not so much a fan, but I'm um, like I like. There's a certain thing about them that sure. I like. I don't like all their songs or, or all their albums, you know I mean? but there's a thing yeah, that yeah, they yeah. do that I'm like, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's always somebody popping up. There's, a, you know, yeah. again, just rip a petty. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tom Petty. Sure, right? I mean. Yeah. Again, like he's fundamental, I feel like, in some ways. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think that's true. Um. Yeah, because he was kind of always there on MTV when we were young. Yeah, and just there's, I mean, I don't know if you if you really those songs you take them for granted because they they're like just part of the woodwork at this point. But like, he just did a thing that was. He, I feel like what he did was he he sort of figured out a way to condense. Uh, so, uh, his so, uh, a songwriting process into like it's just very I, I can't explain yeah, it. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's it's it, you know it, it, a certain there's a certain editing that went into his songwriting that I just mm. find like it's like that's like real mastery yeah, yeah. I can't explain it yeah you know he broke everything down to its essentials I feel like in mm -hmm. a weird way yeah I don't know yeah no I mean I'm with you I love Tom Petty yeah um who else? Who are some of your big ones beyond that? Elvis. Um, I mean, all different things. I mean, you know, the Sid Barrett era of Pink Floyd, oh, which, you know, cool. yeah, had an effect on me. Yeah. There's a guy who I got into later. Uh, his name is Mike Viola, who's a great songwriter, mm -hmm. um, who, you know, I learned stuff from listening to him. It was like that, that I think made me a better songwriter. Yeah. Um, there's a new guy out. His name's Aaron Lee Tazjan. He was, he's kind of like, I think, well, he's not really out of Nashville, but um, I think that's where he, he resides now. But um, he's kind of got this petty thing going on, but it's much more uh, sonically polished and, and, you know, and a lot of stuff going on. I, I, I'll have yeah, to show him. I'll have yeah, to show yeah, him. Yeah, he's, it's re he's really good, though. Really good songwriter. Cool. You know, but cool. I don't know. I could just name. Yeah, yeah. Go on naming people. You well, know? you should. I mean, that's what we're here for. <laughs> uh, My if, list. Yeah. Other than yeah, other than that, <laughs> we'll just, this will be the shortest one of all. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, y y you know, I could. Brian Wilson. Uh, oh, please. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, like, there are certain things that are just. Yeah, it's a given. It's kind of a given, and he was another one where pet sounds. Yeah. Listen to it the first time. I'm like, eh. I yeah, don't yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I listened to it three or four times, and then I'm like, mm -hmm. "Ooh, yeah. all right, now I get it yeah. way too much. It is heavy." Yeah, you know, and it's like you got to get into that guy's world, and when you get into his world, you can kind of see things the way you know. Yeah, I think I know. it's stuff that we learn as musicians that you can't just. I, I think maybe maybe I'm making assumptions, but a lot of lay people 
maybe listen to something and go, I don't like it, but it's right. It's like, you gotta, you have to meet that thing on its own terms and then you can kind of decide whether they're doing it right. I see. You right. Know? Right. Well, if you're interested in actually, you know, like I say, most people, they don't, I, I don't want to. I don't want to knock people. I'm not but knocking they don't have anybody, as much yeah. room for music in their life. Sure. So they're just like next, right? And I'm not knocking know? anybody, and I yeah, totally yeah. get it. But what I'm saying is, I think that there's a thing that that maybe certain lay listeners miss, and they yeah, and, yeah. They, and, and they don't. I don't know. For instance, like um, say like Cardi B, right? Yeah. Which I don't know barely anything. Yeah, about. I don't either. But, but but what I you know, and there's this song that's highly offensive or whatever. But I'm like. But it's kind of catchy and interesting. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it is what it is. So on its own terms, it it succeeds, you know? Sure. Yeah, I, I, I think I know what you mean. Um. Yeah. Cardi B. I don't know. I don't know why I pulled that out. I don't either. I know you got me thinking. Yeah. Um, uh, whoa, what was that? Oh, that was my, that was the, ins that's what I hear all day inside my brain. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's terrifying. Yeah. It's like eight bit. That's horrible. Um, I don't know. Are you searching for things to talk about right now? Slightly. Um, I, I mean, uh, <laughs> that's really encouraging. Well, that's the um, problem because we talk too much all the time. Yeah. I'm just like, I can't, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of someone who does not know you, what they might want to know. And what that's why I'm spacing out. I'm trying sure. to think like that as opposed to well, just. Well, I mean, you know, to speak more to the idea, I mean, just the, you know, because you, you mentioned the rock thing. Sure. I mean, I did spend 20 years playing bar gigs and, yeah. and events or whatever with, you know, with my partner in an acoustic duo. Um, and so, you know, I kind of did the slog like you did in a different way. Yeah. Um, you know, while at the same time, writing classical music and and That's stuff crazy. like that uh which you know whatever but uh but it, it's funny because it's kind of schizophrenic in a way but that it, it is what it is and it's kind of the reality i think for a lot of music people you kind of just do yeah right things, you get right? the se secret life and then you have the the real life where you have to work yeah or, or whatever or you're just doing five different things and you know mm -hmm. whatever make it making it happen but um yeah, sorry. Oh, you're yeah. some kind of visual artist. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, well, Paint, you're a painter. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Well, I, I always was kind of interested in, in, in visual art and, and things of that nature and kind of dabbled throughout since childhood. Um, and then the past four years, I kind of used it as a sort of therapy and then realized that it was a way to kind of get out. It's a different creative process for me sure so it's it's good it's a good way to to kind of practice using the other side of your brain the more instinctual mm. and which i which i need to use in music you know so mm -hmm. um i it's a, it's a nice way to kind of exercise your brain but um but yeah so then i want I, I wound up you know selling art and stuff uh you know visual art too and i and i go back and and uh, when I'm not working on a music thing, I'll go back and paint and then go yeah, back yeah, and yeah. forth and, uh, you know, sell things when when uh, when I have the time to devote to kind of trying to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting. So it's but different. Yeah. They inform definitely inform each other, though. You know, hmm. uh, I know you're not really into that whole scene at all. But I'll yeah, I these don't. Days we'll have to. Yeah. One of these days we'll have to talk about it. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm open to it. I just. Yeah, I don't feel like I know what I'm looking at ever, ever. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you don't, but but that's the thing. It's like, you know, it, right. it can be just kind of a feeling, a kinesthetic thing. It's, you know, right. you don't really need to know intellectually what's going on all the time. Well, that's a good thing because I never do. Right. Well, I mean, it's, it, don't you think that's the way it is with music? I would, I would assume so. But right? like you say, that's me um, – being defensive about my ignorance in a way mm. and saying, well, you know, I don't know because I'm, I have to know something in order to, but then we're going into the, like, what we were talking about music. Like I could just look at something and go, I don't like it, you know, and just right. completely dismiss it without knowing. So I guess there's a fine line in there somewhere. 
Yeah, because it's absolutely maybe even more pronounced with visual art. People like my kid could do that. It's like, no, oh, your, kid, your yeah. kid could not do that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and maybe in certain cases, but, you know. Mm. But, um, yeah, it, again, it's like you got to go to the thing on its own terms yeah, and yeah, figure yeah. out what they're trying yeah. to actually do. And then you can go, well, does it succeed on, on that level that they were trying to actually do it? And which, again, I understand most people don't want to be bothered by. But, you know, but, I have nothing else going on. So that's what well, I well, enough people <laughs> do. I mean, art exists. Sure. I mean, still. So yeah. got to be somewhat. Um, all right. Are you a... So now we're getting into the, the question, the kind of the, I don't know, the summing up questions. Are you a consistent practicer of your instrument? Um, I play all of the, all of the time. I don't, my practice has changed, I think. I think that I've reached a level of technical ability that I can do the things that I want to do sure. for, for the purposes that I need to do. Sure. I mean, don't get me wrong. There is like, I would love to be able to play bebop. I sure. won't because that's a whole other thing I'd have to. But for my life and what I'm doing, I can do, I've got bandwidth. Yeah. Um, so I don't really practice technique so much. I guess I do just by playing, you know, things, but it's more mental. It's more intellectual. Yeah. It's more about thinking about phrasing. So I'll pick up the guitar and just try to do something different or take something that I play all the time and, and vary it. Mm -hmm. and just kind of try to change my approach a little bit or I'll like dabble with another style you know mm. I got you know like through the years don't get me wrong yeah, yeah. not like on Nashville level but I got pretty proficient with like sort of a chicken picking yeah. type thing you yeah. know what I mean um, and that was fairly new that came yeah later. I mean it's like it's just I just kind of I'm like I love that sound and so I'd pick up the guitar and doodle yeah, with yeah, it yeah. a little bit and then doodle with it and doodle with it and I had no I didn't need it for anything. So it just yeah, yeah. over the years, I just kind of got proficient That's at doing the cool. thing that I do. But it, I mean, don't get me wrong. It'd be way, you know, way, way more, but, but that, but somehow that must inform your, re your regular bag of tricks. Sure. It does. In some kind of way. Yeah. I just, I just yeah. used, you know, like, a yeah, re yeah. like I just did a solo on the, th one of these songs that I'm recording and I'm, I'm like, Oh yeah, that sounds like a legit country solo. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's cool. So Where it's a, you know, ten years ago, wouldn't have sounded. You know, I wouldn't have been able to, huh. to to do that probably. But so it's not a, it's not like a waste of time. No, I I don't even think I don't think anything is really. Yeah, right. You know, except this. Except for, <laughs> except for this. No. <laughs> uh, desert island albums, another impossible. All these questions are impossible. Yeah, thanks. They're always impossible. Uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's, I, it's just a question of like, you know, of getting a sense of who people are, I suppose, in some kind of way. Well, we've had this discussion before, so yeah. you know my answer. I it, think I do. You know, and I don't even really want to say it because I don't even know if I believe it, but I... It, H.R. Puff and stuff. Yeah. You know. The the white album is like the Swiss Army knife of music. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, got so. a little bit of everything. Yeah. So you kind of, you know, so I guess if I had to, that, you know, or... The Roy Harris Third Symphony. I never get sick of it. Mm. I just never get sick of it. That's I cool. Know, you know, so like that would be one maybe. I don't know. Yeah. It's weird though. You know, it's 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 tough because it's kind of got to have everything in it. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's another way to think about it too. Oh. Is it's not like um, that it has enough of a range of things that would cover everything, but like. It's kind of almost tied in with the food question, which is coming coming to, which is like something that you enjoy enough that you'd be like, I can enjoy this every time. On just, you know, know what I mean? That's the thing yeah. that's hard for me though, is because like I don't like I you know I haven't listened to the White Album in a couple of good yeah. couple of years yeah. because I'm like eh, just not there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're just that's what I mean. It's sometimes listening is very pragmatic. And it's like, you know, I, yeah. I need this particular thing right now for this particular reason. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, so that, well, I mean, I think that's a that's a real, real. So answer. taking your one word answer and completely. No, well, it no, up, I'm sorry. Yeah, but, you know, nobody, <laughs> nobody, few people can answer that. Yeah, I just it's tough. Curious. It's just it, a curious. It is tough. 
um, and then the, then the food question, you know, if is it what kind of food are you just like? Yeah, I'd be all right with this every day. Probably the thing that everybody says. What pizza? No uh, pickled pickled eggs. Oh yeah, yeah. Nobody says that. Oh, Dave likes pickled eggs. <laughs> no, you, no, re- you really? I, I'm kidding. No, no, no. No, no one likes pickled no. eggs. And then Dave outs himself. Actually, I they're, love pickled <laughs> eggs. they're terrifying even to look at. I don't. I'm not sure what a pickled egg. Well, is. you know, like those. They're sit on the bar. Oh yeah. <laughs> what is with, the, with nicotine stains oh. all around the? Jar. Here's a question. <laughs> Here's a legit question. I forgot to Google it. I'm just going to ask you guys because maybe you know. The hell? What's a deviled egg? What does that mean? That's, deviled. Um, deviled. You, well, you seem to be an egg fan. So. What does that mean? Right. It's a hard-boiled egg it's that's hard-boiled cut egg. in half and uh, stuffed with some. With, with, oh, okay. So it's yeah. a stuffed egg. It's like I a twice you. baked potato, but uh, without the delicious twice baked potato aspect. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So it's nothing like and exactly like it. Right. Well, it's like guerrilla warfare. It's like, oh, this is a thing that looks like the other thing, but it's not that other thing at all. I don't know what you... <laughs> I, I, don't, I, know that. I don't get that one. That forget. one I don't get. Wow. No, forget it. Far out. Um, we we could... This could be the end. It could be. Do you have anything else that you want to that you want to cover, that you want to mm. talk about? But, I mean, that not particularly other than i mean actually if i may just mention that um i've got a website you can go to and i'm working on an ep of original songs so like you could find out stuff about that if you go to the website or which is so it's tom izzo music.com and it's izzo i-z-z-o i-z-z-o two two z's not two s's and not one z gotcha gotcha so yeah. yeah check that out see what he's up to yeah um where can your art be seen anywhere? Eventually on my website. I kind okay. of just am in the middle of re-uploading things mm-hmm. and, and all that stuff. But I, I there's a, um, a design studio in Hamden that has a bunch of pieces of mine. But I don't think they're open to the public right now because of the COVID thing. Oh, right. Um, so, uh, yeah. And, yeah. All right. And what's next? No more gigging. Nah, we talk about I it. don't think so. Kind of something that you we lost during the pandemic. You don't really care about picking it not up again really, so much. Not so much. Um, no, I'm just the, so just working on an EP of original music, actively recording right now. In a week, I will be uh, pressuring you to play drums on a tune or two. Sure. And hopefully, it'll be done. The answer is no, but yeah, sure. The answer <laughs> is. Play that, no. play that theme song yeah. and tell me no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you owe me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, you're right. Um, uh, yeah, so hopefully that'll be done. And I, I don't even know, like, after it's recorded, I guess it's got to be mastered. And then, yeah. then, like, how long all that stuff takes, I have no idea. But, you know, hopefully in a month or two. Yeah, nobody knows. You know, but that's, that's all I'm working toward. And then I will shut my brain off. Yeah. Know, for a good year. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, we could all use a good a good shut shut off of brain. That's true. <clears throat> all right. Well, you know, we, we could we could end there. Sure. I, I you know this is I'm not gonna say it's difficult, but we have to pretend like we're having a conversation when in re- reality we have conversations all the time. I'm just trying to think in terms of what somebody who does not who is not pu- privy to our conversations would wanna find interesting mm. or not so maybe who knows i think it's cool i think it's cool um so yeah tom did make this like in an hour remember yeah we had a leftover drum track from something else that we did that i did somewhere and i said hey can you can you write something to that you know 15 seconds or whatever of that that uh that drum track and I just mentioned it to you. I'm just like, I don't know. Can you think you could do something? Like an hour later, he sends me an email. You mean like this? <laughs> you know, I'm like, it's awesome. Um, all right. I'm going to press it one more time and say the goodbyes. How about that? Sure. All right. Thanks for coming. I know it's not easy because it's hard to make up conversations when we already know everything. 
Sure. But no, my, my pleasure. Oh, good. Of course. Well, and go and uh, then we can pretend like we don't know each other after this is over. Yeah. Anything. Well, thanks, uh, Tom I, I, Iso, for coming. <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually about right. Yeah. Yeah. Story of my <laughs> life. All right. John Peckman Podcast. Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance. Beautiful downtown Portland, Connecticut. Come over the bridge, start looking left. We were here with Tom Izzo, my best friend. Uh, if you're interested in hosting your own podcast, listen after this. More important information on how you can do that. Thanks for listening. Greatly appreciated. See you later. If you'd like to start your own podcast, give us a call at Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance. Our professionally designed podcast space is here for all your recording needs. Rent out our studio to do interviews with up to four people to record audiobooks, social media content, and all other recorded material. Our rentals include a private studio along with our professional-grade podcasting equipment and... We can customize your output to whatever your needs are. We also have green screen capabilities, which will expand to uh, video capability if you so wish. So check us out here at convalley.net forward slash podcast.